Okay. <clears throat> what if you want to make a sphere and with have, without having all those holes inside? Which, that's great for this application, but for most applications of a sphere, you don't really want that. So you start out the same way with a, uh, a cylinder of, of material. Now I'm going to make this one at two, two inches instead of 50 millimeters. And I, I've, I've, I've turned it down close. I've got about another 30 seconds of an inch to go. So I'll go ahead and I'll trim that down to uh, two, two inches. hear more. Okay, we've got two, two inches. Okay, so I marked the center line again. Okay, just, just as a so I can get an idea of how much I got to take off. There's my my two inch two inch limit there. So I've got I think it looks like it didn't get it right in the center. We got plenty of material. Well, let's go the other direction because this this is a solid fixed point over here, and it's going to go in deeper. So I, I don't want to leave a mark. Let me do this better. Probably a little, little bit deeper on, on this side because that fixed point goes in deeper. Okay, so I got that much, about the equal amounts on both sides, right? But can you see the lines there? There and so I'm going to start turning down now. Here I don't have I don't have the on, on the initial curve turning. I don't have any any shadow to follow. So I just have to do that by eye. Uh, but I made up some. Uh, I started out just cutting, you know, taking cereal box cardboard and cutting a sphere the, the, of the desired diameter, and then cutting uh, a concave with two different spacings to fit around to uh, to judge my uh, curvature. But then I decided to want something a little bit more durable than that. And then I was trying to think of how, how I was going to make this. And then I said, ah, I've got a bunch of these things laying around. So what I did was I took, took a block of wood and, and, fastened, and screwed that down with these screws onto the block of wood, clamped that down to the drill press took a, a two-inch Forstner bit and drilled through the center of the Forstner, through with the Forstner bit. So that gave me 
this curvature here of two, a two inch curvature. So then once I got that cut, then I just decided different, <coughs> different size pie sections. Oftentimes you'll see a, a, a sphere where they got it almost a full, full semicircle. Well, you can't, it's hard to fit the full semicircle on there. You can't tell what part of it isn't right yet. So you need, uh, need a smaller one to, to check it in smaller increments. Then you, just, then you can try a bit larger one and then a larger one after that to, until you get as close to a sphere, to a curve, proper curvature as you can. And what did you cut the uh, disc with? Start out drilling a hole on the drill press. Right. Okay. And then, it, then I cut those pie segments with a scroll saw. With a scroll saw. Yeah. And I think, I think it, was, it was a puzzle blade. <laughs> it, was real, it was one of those I couldn't see the teeth on it, but I could feel some roughness on it. <laughs> <laughs> puzzle blade. <laughs> and then, then to get the, uh, the, I found, you know, holding it like this, you can tell the curvature that way. You can get a bigger, with this one, all you're seeing is a small, getting a small picture. This one, you're sort of holding it up there like that. You can get a bit, bit big, bigger picture of, of where your, how your sphere is shaping. And then to do this one, I started out with two blocks or two uh, <coughs> pieces of uh, four quarter oak in this case. I cut it on the scroll saw to about two and a quarter inches in diameter. And then I <coughs> to put, it on, put, it between, put it between centers, made it round, because I can't cut round on the scroll saw. <laughs> Once I got around, then I took my, my CD, I, I marked the center on the end, marked the center, there, there's, there's my, my drive spur. I marked the center there and then I put, I just physically centered, centered just eyeballed, centered and then put a piece of masking tape across there to hold it in place. And then took my sandwich like that and put it back on the lathe between centers. And then I took my skew, with the skew riding on the surface here, then I just pierced through it with the skew to cut off that outer, outer most of the ring. And then once that was off, then I just took a spindle gouge and just went down to, to the two inch diameter that I wanted. And then I did a one and seven eighths and one and three quarters and one and five eighths and one and a half. And that's what's left over after I got it down to one and a half. So that's how I made the perfect circles to, uh, for other, that other application. So. Okay, I'm just using a spindle gouge now, just to uh, to start start my uh, my curvature, start the sphere. Now, last you know, about about several months ago, Glenn, can't remember what his last name is. Withrow. Yeah, he he showed us a technique where you, and I can't remember some I think a guy from Sweden came up with the technique. And he, he's actually got a caliper. It's got three, three different points on the caliper to mark the different measurements on here, but the, uh, the first measurement was, you measured that with the one points on the caliper, and then the other points on the caliper gave you a dimension here and a dimension here. You get the dimension here, and then you, you cut a straight across there, and, and it's about you know, 0.70 something distance. To, so it's very, very precise measurements, and then, then you've got to make very precise cuts. It's got to be a straight cut across, can be concave or convexed. I find it much easier just to do it this way. Plus it gives you hand-eye coordination practice of being able to, I know what a sphere should look like, how do I make it look like a sphere on there? As I'm doing this, I'm watching the curvature up there develop. So I start out with my, my smallest. You can see there I got, there's a bit of a gap in between there. That the curvature right there, there's a, that's a high spot there. So I can just rotate it around there and get a, a picture of where that curvature is. Or I can take this one here and hold it up. Maybe that, that might look better. 
just hold it up like that and get an idea of where my, oh, here, here's the center of my circle here, so I've got a lot more material to take off out there. See, I've got, I've got the center lined up here and there, so I can see there, I got, I got more material that's got to come off over there. And I need to, I, the curvature, I, the amount of curvature that I need depends on the size of the cup chuck that I'm going to be using. Uh, so I've got, I need to get that, the curvature as, as close as I can for the size of my cup chuck. So I've got to have that much of the curvature pretty precise in order to fit, fit in my cup chuck. Again, I've still got material to come out there. That's pretty good right there though. So let's go on the, go on the other side and take some off of there. Look at the next larger one. And I'll order into it when you decide. Well, we should take it. Two more. And I want to make sure it's two more. Where's the other? Let's see what I did with the other one. Oh, here it is over here. Yeah, see, I've got. I'm not showing you. Yeah, there, you can see on the camera there, I've got, I got a gap, so I've got, I've got to take some more off right there. And in another way, you, you can, I know I've got two, two inches there. What you do is you can measure across like that and see that I've got about two and a sixteenth. But it, the, that's, you can't really go with that strictly because this one might be low and this one high and still gets a two inches. So it needs to be balanced. But I find this is the best, best way to look. Did the dog keep up better? You can see there, see, I've got, I got high spots. I got a high spot right there, and I got a high spot right, right there. What you don't want to do is take off too much. I 
That looks pretty good there. I know it's pretty kind of gets close enough for there. Okay, so now we'll switch it around and, and turn it the other axis like we did with the uh, instead of having points there, we're just going to use a cup chuck. Okay, now for cup chuck, I've got different. You can you can just put a block of wood in your uh, in your in your chuck and make a cup on it. But the problem with that is if you want to make multiple spheres, it's kind of hard to reposition that in the chuck and get it to run perfectly true. And to make the sphere, you really need to be running perfectly true. So here's a cup chuck that I made by just using the uh, Beal spindle tap that will just screw directly onto the spindle. Here's one that I made by making a, a number two Morse taper that will actually fit into the taper. And, uh, and it's got a, a recess in it for a, a, a sphere. But the one I really like is this one here. This, this is a best wood that's threaded in there. This has got threads on it. It's the same, same thread that's on the, the uh, I mean, uh, one-way uh, life center. It's got three, three-quarter by 10 threads. Are they three-quarter by 10 or three-quarter by eight threads on, on the end of that? Well, this, is, this, this piece here has got that same thread on there, and this is a faceplate that screws onto there. So the thing you can do with that, if you want to make special fittings for your live center, you can screw them onto here. You cut the threads on it, of course, then screw it on here and turn it on, the, on the, the, the drive here, and then switch it over and put it on your live center. So with this little faceplate, I'm, I'm screwed a block of wood on there, and that's this, the, uh, the live center, or the, uh, the uh, cup chuck that I prefer. And those, the best wood tools, this best wood, yeah, best wood tools, they're out here on the end of the rack. All they have is a tool rest out here. They don't have these. But if you go into the symposium next weekend, they'll be up there and they have, they'll have it up there at the symposium. Why do you prefer that kind? Well, because I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it runs, every time I put it in, it runs true. I don't have to worry about it, you know. As opposed to putting it into a chuck. Yeah. You put a, put a piece of wood in the chuck and you turn it, you take it out, you put it back in, there's no, it, most likely it's not going to be running the same as what it was when you took it out. Okay, so now I marked, using my, my index here, I made marks on here at 90 degrees apart. And then I used that with my little wooden block on my one-way live center. And I've took, I just cut it down to a very small and just put a little uh, foam pad on it. Um, Oftentimes you'll hear you know, cup chucks, plural. I mean, you got a cup chuck here and a cup chuck here. Well, there's, there's always a bit of slop in, your, in the tailstock. Well, depending on how you slide it up there, that sphere could be seated in there or it could be seated over here. And they might be fighting each other. So with this way, I, I'm rest more, more sure that it's gonna be seated into there and I'm just pressing and holding it in place with, this, with the uh, smaller uh, spot on this end. Slightly concave or no, it's flat? it's flat across. I originally put a concave on it and didn't have the uh, the little cushion on there, and it was it was because that's oak is harder wood, and I might have cherry or something softer, and it was putting an indentation in my you know my sphere because I need I need enough pressure there to keep it from slipping. So no, it's just flat, and I got a little sponge sponge pad or foam pad on it. Okay, here's where. Our, or but your shed. cup chuck and the headstock is concave. I wanted to show you that too. And this is threaded also. If you, if you want to put something on there and turn it, it's, it's got, you can put a uh, draw bar in there and, and hold it in place with a threaded insert. But since I'm doing this between centers, I don't really need that in there. So another thing you can use, use this for is the size of the cup. The bigger the cup, the more secure it's going to hold, this, hold the, uh, the sphere, but the more the, wide, the wider, the, uh, you have to have a perfect circle, a larger area of perfect circle in order to fit into a larger cup. Plus a larger cup is going to restrict your access of being able to get in around here to get in farther down here. If you've got a large cup, you can't come near as far around there for cleaning it up. So the smaller, the smaller cup chuck, the better for this, but a smaller cup chuck is not going to give you as much stability. I found a paper online, I can't remember what the guy's name was, but he suggested a, the diameter of the cup chuck would be between 3 tenths and 5 tenths of the diameter of your sphere. So I chose 4 tenths. I got a 4, four tenths of 
the diameter of my sphere. And what I did is I, instead of just having a sharp edge around the end, around the, uh, first of all, I drilled a hole just to, just to take some material out of the center because I, I, don't, I don't need to have a complete cup all the way around the bottom. I only really need you know, an eighth of an inch or, or a little bit more. But that's another nice thing about this is I can cut the, I can cut the, the cup and I can, with my disc here, I can tell that I got the curvature for my two mil, two inch sphere. So yeah, the cup chuck is made for a specific size circle. where our ghost image comes in again. Okay, now the grain is running across this way. So I, I could, this, this gouge has a, uh, a 45 degree bevel on it. I could come up here with the 45 degree bevel on my uh, spindle gouge. And, 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 and come up like that and come across, or I can go back to using my, my uh, bowl gouge. But the first thing I want to do is, is knock that, like I did before, I want to go just make a straight cut across there and get rid of that. Let's use this one. My spindle is slipping. In my, uh, <coughs> I didn't have it clamped down tight enough. It'll probably put a dent in there, but. Like you can see, I've, 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 my cut has come from there to there. So I've still got a ways to go down and my, my dimension or my di diameter at that point now is, so I'm still over about two and a 30 second. Okay, I've went just slightly, I've just taken the line off there, and I've taken the line off there, so I'm probably slightly under two inches now. Oh no, still. Right at two inches. Okay, so now the same thing, I, I, can, I can turn it this way. And knock those corners off there. Again, I'm, I can't I measure, because I know that I've already done the d dimension here and I've done the dimension there, so I need to measure diagonally across those areas that I'm cutting off now. And I'm about a 30 seconds of an inch over two. Okay. Um, your lines are not lined up, is that on purpose? Or? Uh, it, it, it really, it's not really critical for this, but yeah, if you, if you do line it up, you can um, then look at the other side and you can see, yeah, it did, yeah, it did, yeah, yes and no, it doesn't. When, when there's another thing I was going to show you that, yeah, it does have to be lined up on there, but that's just a, just a guideline. It doesn't really have to be, no.
Okay, it's getting just slightly over two. Just make a little, little shave off of it. Tell now, see, I've, I've come across that point where I, where I was turning this X. I've come across there, and I've come across. Well, I haven't got so my 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 sphere is not sitting in there perfectly because I've taken more off here than what I've taken off over here. See, this this is this is connected here. It's not connected there. So so I'm going to call, I'm calling I'm calling this the quest for a perfect sphere. I haven't got there quite yet. Okay, but we got two inches that that dimension there. So we're, we're, we've got two inches around this way, two inches around this way, and two inches around that way. So now, again, we're left with those facets around the corner there. And again, the, uh, the orientation of the grain is, there, that's the end grain there. So the grain is running across the bed of the lay this way. Okay, that's pretty close, and then we'll just give a little touch with the scraper. Just rotate it around. Let's see what that feels like. Again, we can uh, just touch it up finally with that uh, 80 grit again. And go over with uh, sander down to three four hundred. <laughs> okay, uh, yep. What's the biggest sphere you severe you've ever attempted? No, I did a baseball. You have no bowling ball. Yet. No. <laughs> and no desire to do a bowling ball. <laughs> The, the wood that I get is, is wood that's free, and you don't often give big pieces of wood like that free, so I, I do small stuff. Okay, one of the, one of the uh, Christmas ornament ideas that I left out is another way to limit this link, the, the weight of the ornament is just make a smaller ornament, so it doesn't require any hollowing. Any questions?